Okay, this is part B of chapter 13, and here we're dealing with the, uh, the cranial nerves, their origin and course and function. Okay, there's 12 pairs of cranial nerves, and they're associated either with the brain or the brain stem. Two attached to the forebrain, the rest with the brain stem. Most of these are mixed nerves. Two pairs are purely sensory, and there are some that are also purely motor. They are numbered from 1 through 12 from rostral to caudal, rostral being closest to the nose up here with the olfactory bulb, and caudal being closest to the spinal cord. Okay? Um, examples of mnemonics that can be used um, to um, rem memorize the, uh, the cranial nerves. Uh, the old one is on old Olympus towering tops, a Finn and German viewed some hops. Okay? And uh, that is let's see here. that is uh, that's, that stands for um, olfactory number one, optic number two, ocular motor number three. Uh, there is uh, trochlear, which is four, trigeminal, five, abducens, which is six, facial, seven, vestibulocochlear, eight, auditory, nine, vagus is ten, spinal accessory is eleven, and hypoglossal is twelve. Okay. Now you'll notice that some of the new names here um, include the um, vestibulocochlear for the auditory and accessory for spinal accessory. So just keep that in mind when you're um, choosing choices on an exam. Okay. You can see the pairs listed here, their function, whether or not they're sensory motor or mixed. Um, there's a mnemonic for mixed as well which I should go ahead and give you, okay? And it is, some say money matters, but my brother says big brains matter more. Where B is for both, S is for sensory, and M is for mix. Okay? So, um, that's from 1 through 12. Okay? Another mnemonic that will be useful to you. The olfactory nerve is unique in that it's the only one that bypasses the thalamus on its way back to the cerebral cortex. It uh, runs from the nasal cavity through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone to the olfactory bulb. It is a sensory nerve, and its job is to turn odorants into stimuli that we associate with smell. Okay, so that's the that's what the um, the bipolar neurons here are actually doing. Okay. It's unique in that this is one of the few regions of the body where neurons regenerate. Okay, so here what will happen is after a period of time, the olfactory neurons will die because they're exposed to the exterior, and they will be replaced by new olfactory neurons that come about from both basal cells and there's evidence that um, some of these nerve cells may actually migrate through the brain and take up residence in the olfactory bulb. And this is um, this is part of what went into the thinking behind repairing those spinal cord injuries I was talking about earlier, which is that um, they harvested glial cells from the bulb and apparently they were able to reprogram the central nervous system neurons into regrowing across the spinal cord break and re the uh, the caudal regions of the cord and recovering function so that that gentleman in the wheelchair was able to uh, stand up, walk, and have sensation again. Okay. Uh, the optic nerves are also purely sensory. Okay. They run from the retina back through the um, optic disc into the optic nerve. The fibers, the nasal fibers cross at the optic chiasm. The optic tracts project back from the chiasm to the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus, and then another set of neurons carries that back to the occipital lobe of the brain. 
Note that we're cross-wired so that the right half of the brain processes the left visual field in both eyes and vice versa. Okay. Um, again, purely a sensory nerve. Okay? Um, it, it runs through the sphenoid bone. The oculomotor nerve is responsible for moving the muscles that move the eyeball. Okay, and it runs through the superior and inferior orbital fissure. It also contains uh, parasympathetic neurons that innervate the um, sphincter pupillae, which causes the constriction of the pupil and um, also um, controls the, uh, the diameter of the pupil. Okay, so um, this promotes um, pupillary constriction, particularly in bright light. All right, so this is an example of a, of a nerve that is, it's a motor nerve, but it has both autonomic motor and somatic motor fibers, okay? The muscles that are targeted are the superior, medial, and inferior rectus, and the inferior oblique, okay? The trochlear nerve talks to the um, superior oblique muscle that moves the eyeball down and laterally when it pulls. Um, it runs through the superior orbital fissure on its way to the um, superior oblique. Right? It is strictly a motor neuron. It is a somatic motor neuron, or somatic motor nerve, rather. Okay, And it's usually tested at the same time as the oculomotor and another nerve we're going to talk about called the abducens. Okay? The trigeminal nerve is unique. Uh, it's one of the largest cranial nerves, and the fibers run from the pons to the face. The three divisions are the ophthalmic, which runs through the superior orbital fissure, the maxillary, which passes through the foramen rotundum, and the mandibular, which passes through the foramen ovale. Okay, remember that those are uh, holes that are found in the sphenoid bone. They convey sensory impulses from various areas of the face, and they supply motor fibers to the muscles of mastication, which would be the temporalis and the masseter, okay? So, a mixed nerve, okay? Um, you can see here, if we look at the map, why it's called trigeminal. You can see the three branches coming off, okay? Notice the, uh, the trigeminal ganglion up by the, uh, above the uh, zygomatic bone, okay? And note the distribution of the sensory fibers on the map of the face. Okay? The abducens nerve talks to the lateral rectus muscle and runs through the superior orbital fissure. It is a motor neuron, motor nerve rather, um, and it's usually tested at the same time as the oculomotor and the trochlear. Okay? And so this is again made up entirely of somatic motor fibers because remember that the muscles that move the eyeball are skeletal muscles. Okay? The facial nerve has five branches. Okay, um, the, run, the fibers run from the pons, travel through the internal acoustic meatus, and emerge through the styloid mastoid foramen, and um, are going to basically talk to the lateral aspect of the face. It's the chief motor nerve of the face with five major branches. The motor functions are facial expression but it also has parasympathetic fibers that innervate the lacrimal and the salivary glands, and it has a sensory function from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Okay, So again, this is a combination of both autonomic and somatic motor fibers, as well as efferent and afferent fibers. Okay? So you can see here the five branches. Note their targets. Okay? The vestibulocochlear nerve, which used to be called the auditory nerve, has afferent fibers from hearing receptors in the cochlear division and equilibrium receptors in the vestibular division. They pass from the inner ear through the internal acoustic meatus and they enter the brainstem at the pons medulla junction. Most of the nerve fibers are sensory. There is a tiny motor component for the adjustment of the sensitivity of the receptors. Okay. Um, the eighth cranial nerve 
is, as a result, responsible for conveying the sense of balance and hearing. Okay. And it is embedded entirely in the temporal bone and passes through the internal and external acoustic meatus. Okay. The glossopharyngeal nerve has fibers from the medulla that leave the skull through the jugular foramen and run into the throat. The motor functions are to innervate part of the tongue and the pharynx for swallowing and provide parasympathetic fibers to the parotid salivaries. The sensory function, fibers conduct taste and general sensory impulses from the pharynx and the posterior tongue and impulses from the carotid chemoreceptors and baroreceptors. Okay. So, basically, taste from the tongue and has a role in adjusting blood pressure. Okay. As well as the rate and force of the contraction of the heart. The vagus nerve is unusual. It's the only cranial nerve that runs beyond the head and neck. The fibers from the medulla exit the skull through the jugular foramen. Most motor fibers are parasympathetic fibers that help regulate the activities of the heart, lungs, and abdominal viscera. The sensory fibers carry impulses from the thoracic and abdominal viscera, as well as from barrel and chemoreceptors, as well as taste buds from the posterior tongue and the pharynx. Okay. So this, you could say, its main role is the, uh, the major parasympathetic lead to the thoracic and abdominal pelvic organs. Okay. Um, it is the longest of the 12 cranial nerves. The spinal accessory nerve, now called the accessory nerve, is formed from ventral rootlets from C1 through C5 of the spinal cord. The rootlets pass into the cranium through each form and magnum. The accessory nerves exit the skull through the jugular foramina and innervate the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid and allow you to turn your head. So it is a somatic motor nerve, okay? entirely efferent fibers. Okay? The hypoglossal nerve has fibers that originate from the medulla and exit the skull through the hypoglossal canal and innervate extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of the tongue that are important in swallowing and in speech. Okay, so um, this is responsible for uh, tongue movement. All right, it is a um, entirely motor nerve. Okay, so it is efferent information carried here. Okay, and that's the last of the twelve cranial nerves. Okay. Olfactory and optic nerve have neuron cell bodies within special sense organs. Other nerves that have sensory function have their bodies in cranial sensory ganglia. The mixed nerves have both somatic and autonomic fibers. Most motor neuron cell bodies are in the ventral gray matter of the brain stem with some autonomic motor neurons lying in ganglia. Okay, Remember the ganglia are clusters of nerve cell bodies that lie outside of the spinal cord. To remember, again, whether they're sensory motor or both, that is our mnemonic. Right? Uh, this is a, a variation of it. Mine was some say money matters, but my brother um, says big brains matter more. Okay. So, um, that's uh, M for motor, or M for mixed, B for both, S for sensory, okay? And for motor, B for both, S for sensory. All right, I will see everybody in the next podcast. Stay tuned.